Okay, so we are back with another little lesson on editing our stitch file that we just created. So I don't know if any of you noticed that when I was creating my little wonky applique stitch pattern that I actually made a mistake in it. Did anybody notice? Um, I would like to say that I had made that mistake on purpose, but I did not make it on purpose, and it wasn't until I was actually watching the stitch pattern out down here in my preview screen that I realized that um, one thing I'd noticed there was I started noticing not only how it was stitching out here, but I also started noticing my numbers that were on my stitch points um, here on the stitches on the screen, that they just didn't seem to be quite right, and that's when I realized that I had neglected to add in uh, the strong outline stitch on my stitch pattern. So remember that when I was doing these out, um, what is going to be the outside edge of my applique pattern, that I was stitching this line five times. In other words, it would uh, be from here, it would be like one, two, three, four, five, before it went down to do the little, uh, what we call the bites into the stitch. So I did notice that I had neglected to do that. And where the boo-boo is at is it's in between this space right in here. So there's a couple of different ways that you could figure out uh, if you had noticed that something like that happened when you stitched out your stitch pattern on your sewing machine. If I had stitched this on the sewing machine, it would have been really obvious that I had forgotten to insert those stitches in there. Um, but at any rate, there's a couple of different ways that you can figure out where it is that your mistakes are at. One of them is, um, I believe it was in the very first session when I was talking about the toolbars that I was telling you about in your view tab. You can select the stitch numbers. If I were to deselect this button, all the numbers that correspond with the stitch points that are here in the stitch point list disappear. I typically, when I am making stitch composed patterns, I typically like to have the stitch numbers turned on because then I, it gives me a really good reference for what's happening on the screen and what the stitch order is. Um, there may be times when you might want to turn them off and then there's times when you're going to want to have them on. All right, so anyway, where is my mistake? One way that you can figure out where it's at is you can come over to your home button you can turn on your point and move selector. When you turn that on, as I've said before, that turns all of your stitches lavender. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to come to my view button and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm just going to hit zoom, zoom, zoom until this is pretty big. And the reason I want to do that is I'm going to start temporarily moving some of these stitch points just so that you can see what's underneath them. So that then you can uh, follow along with me about where the mistake happened. So 22 is here. Um, I, I went from 17 to 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I came down here to 23, I believe. 21, 22. And then I came over here to 23. If I start moving these stitch points, you're going to see that 23 is going to be underneath here somewhere. See it? That's how I know um, that I made a mistake because I went from 23, 24 is going to be underneath this one. See that? Okay, so the, hopefully that's making sense to you that I know that this is the line that did not get stitched five times. So I'm just going to move all my stitch points back up to where they belong. It doesn't really matter what order I'm moving them in there. I've just moved the points. So the point that I needed to... Uh, make my correction at is after stitch number 23. It went from 22 to 23, 24, 25, I think. Anyway, I believe it's 23. The other way that I can figure out where the boo boo occurred is I can turn off the, come back to home, turn off the point and move button. And I can, because my stitch is still up on the screen from when I was working on it earlier, I can actually hit my backspace button. Do you remember when I was telling you that there's two ways that you can get rid of stitches? One of them is to use your cut button. You could select that number of the stitch over here on your stitch point list and hit cut, and it would delete it. Uh, does not work the same as a regular delete button on a computer screen. But I don't want to cut these. What I want to do is I'm just trying to find out for sure where is my mistake. And the other way that I can figure this out is I can just use my backspace. Backspace is just basically like traveling backwards. 
through this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hit backspace until you can see that my stitch points are starting to um, change up here. 37 and 38, we're going to start losing these buttons, these stitches. 37 is showing as the last stitch. 36 is still there. 35, 34, okay, two. So does this make sense? My stitches are starting to disappear. 27 is there, 26, 25, 24, 23. If I back here, watch this, 22. And if I, so I know that after 23 was where I, I need to add my extra stitches back in. I'm just going to hit undo, undo, undo until everything comes back to where I can't undo anymore because everything is recreated. It's a little cumbersome way. So see all of this stuff? Oh, I want those all back where they're at. So redo, redo, and redo. All right, so it's after 23 that I want to use my insert button. So I am... Um, back here in my home screen I want you to notice that the insert button is lit up but if I was still in my point move um, function where everything is lavender insert would not be functional so that would mean uh, for the Janome people that have been used to using Janome software if something's grayed out that that means you need to do something first to make this work so what I needed to do first was make sure I'm out of my point move and then I'm ready to insert buttons so insert is always going to happen after the point on the uh, stitch pattern that we needed to insert the stitches. They're inserting after, not before the stitch pattern. I hope that will make sense to you. So it's after stitch number 23 that I need to insert my stitches. I'm going to come to the stitch point list and I'm going to select number 23. I'm going to select the insert button and I'm just turning it on. Um, Oh, I'm turning the insert button on first, then I'm going to turn on my number 23, and something's not happening. 23. So I, did you notice I just turned on my without a shift? So 23 is highlighted. I'm going to make 24, 25, 26, 27. I just added in all those extra stitches that needed to be on that point, and I'm going to hit my insert button says here inserting the points after the selected point without a shift so there they are all right now you're going to see the stitch pattern down here that is simulated i'm going to speed it up a little bit so it can go a little faster and i'm hoping that this is going to fix my stitch pattern exactly like i wanted and that is how you're going to insert stitches um, so I know that you all are going to come up against times when you're going to have to come back in and add stuff in. So that is the way that that function actually works. I'm back at home. The next thing that I want to do is I want to save my new corrected stitch pattern. So I'm going to come over to write a design. It automatically is going to open my ORD F file because that's the um, last place where I had saved designs and my USB stick is still in my machine in my computer. So it's just going to automatically open up to the ORD F file. Notice that this stitch is the P applique 2 stitch. This is the old one that had the boo-boo in it. The way that I'm going to um, replace this stitch is this one here still has the same name. If for some reason this came up calling it just an ST, you would hit the rename file. You would call it the exact same thing as the boo-boo file. Okay, uh, You would have to spell it exactly the same you know, same uppercase, lowercase letters, numbers, anything that um, it was originally named as, you would have to rename it exactly like it. I'm going to select the send button. It's asking me this question, this PP applique two stitch already exists. Do you want to replace it? And I will say yes. So it has now wiped out the old one and it has saved it with the new one. And I'm hoping that that's going to be a beautiful little wonky applique stitch. So that is one way to use the insert button to add in additional stitches in your Stitch Composer stitch file. Go and try it. Have fun.